what are your influences for the lyrics of Acroesis? Was there any literature that you looked up to? The song, for example, the song Sermon of the Seven Sons is based on a Buddhist prophecy about the end. Where does the album find similar points of connection after that? Because oh. this is, as you said in an interview long back, that this is part of a four series uh, album quadrology, right? Yeah, that's uh, actually a very, very long story, but let's go. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, um, yeah, you, you're right. So Acrasis is actually album number three out of a four album concept based uh, row of uh, releases. We started that with Cosmogenesis, went through Omnivium. Now we are here at Acrasis and there's a fourth album coming we are already working on. Oh. So th to explain the lyrics uh, a little bit, um, the, the overall concept from Cosmogenesis was more or less like the the existence, the uh, evolvement of um, this this cosmos universe, um, our being and existence. While um, Nivium is more based on the evolution, so that's also the reason why we have all those different colors. Yes. So the blue one, the ice cold uh, universe, cosmos. That's at least something I would uh, uh, combine with that. The green color for this evolutionary and uh, weird sounding album. So that uh, you hear those blubber vocals, yes. like David Winsor did sometimes <laughs> on the, on uh, Domination back then. This is actually what I try to to combine there. And with Acrasis, we are at the point uh, to get a, a consciousness. Yes. Uh, while album number four is more or less the the complete apocalypse. So this is the end. So you have in total you have a full life circle. So, uh, and what is the album cover uh, really about? Is the album cover uh, the planet where all life at one point of time used to exist? Um, no, I have to uh, start again with the, um, the meaning Akrasis. Akrasis actually is old Greek for, um, for listening or hearing. And I found that from... Uh, um, from a Swiss professor, a book called Acrasis, and he's um, an astrophysic, or was an astrophysic, unfortunately he passed away a couple of years ago, but his theses uh, were based on the Pythagorean thought about harmony of the worlds, so that everything like uh, our existence, our uh, DNA, how trees are growing, are somehow built on a harmonic structure. And the album cover itself um, you, you see those uh, triangles and everything? Yes. In, uh, below on the right? This is actually the idea of that all of this is built on a philosophical basis, but um, you can fracture it down. Like, you can call it uh, tessellieren it. And in the, in the background, you see parts of the previous albums. So actually, you're looking in the past with this album. That's a very profound concept indeed. Um, describe the transition process of lyrical themes between Omnivium and Acroesis. Like a sense of which song would be the point of connection between the two albums? Um, you mentioned Sermon of the Seven Sons. Yes. Um, and all, all of those albums are linked in between within the music, but also within the lyrics. So um, Omnivium was based on the... Um, uh, what's the English word? Um, the three layers of uh, the religion, the real, yes. uh, the real life, and uh, damn it, uh, the philosophical part. So um, these, this album concept was asking a lot of, lot of questions. So it was a, a back and forth in between those three persons or in persons and. Those uh, questions I asked there have been answered within Acrasis. So, Omnivium was uh, written pretty pretty lyrical. So there's no there's no groove um, because I tried to work through a complete book as a concept from Friedrich Schelling called Clara, yes. and I used the same influences from Cosmogenesis, Omnivium on Acrasis. But on Acrasis, I tried um, to make multi-layered lyrics. So this is, uh, again, a link to the music. Since the music is multi-layered, I did the same with Acrasis. So on the, on the basement, you have the, this astrophysic cosmic ideas. On the second, uh, you have the religious view from different religions. You 
you mentioned the Buddhistic uh, point of view for the apocalypse. That's mentioned within Akra, uh, within uh, Sermon of the Seven Sermon Sons. Of seven sons. And, yes. And on top of that, you have the philosophical ideas from Goethe and from Schelling, from the naturalism. Okay. And this is all something I try to combine. And um, all of these religious thoughts have been inverted. So, if you see a, a song like um, Ode to the Sun, this is actually a, a hymn to the death. And Sermon of the Seven Sons uh, is based on, well, um, the death or the, the uh, destruction of our existence through the yes. sun. And, in, for example, in the Christian, uh, uh, Christian thoughts, Christian religion, um, the light bringer is actually something good. So, the... The sun, the light, is something you are you're looking for. You're going into into the light if you're, for example, passing away. That's something people in in all religions see and have. So um, now we're going back to the astrophysical thought. There's the idea that two thirds of um, all the mass in this cosmos is actually black mass. So that means that the light is actually the intruder. So the enlightener is actually the bad thing. And this is actually an anti-cosmic thesis. I'm referring to the anti-cosmic overload I wrote in 2008. So um, this is all linked somehow together. And to be honest, finally, I'm the very first time happy with the lyrics. So as, as I evolved as a, as a musician from uh, our very first demo, which was kind of, well, um, well, we have been teenagers, let's say that. <laughs> uh, but... From that point on, uh, you evolve more and more and more, and the same happened with the lyrics. For uh, If you uh, compare the lyrics from Cosmogenesis, which have been a little bit more rough, I'm, I'm not a native speaker at all, um, to Akrasis, five, six, seven years later, mm -hmm. I think this evolves as well. And finally, we are at the state where I'm really happy about it, and uh, I'm about to express... Uh, the whole idea is on a, on a better level, on a higher level. One track in general which basically caught my attention, uh, you know, when I look at the entire Obscura's discography is, is I think it's pronounced as well seal. In my, in, in fact, I was even discussing with Roshan that this is one of the best Obscura songs in terms of, in terms of the arrangements from, you know, intricate patterns and everything which has been part of it. I feel it's kind of a very different than, than you know, most of the, Obscure songs, I can easily consider it as as a masterpiece. How is it like for you in general, being the the mastermind, the main you know person behind the band, to have a song like Well Seal as uh, you know uh, part of this album? Um, well, there ha there have been a couple of ideas behind that song, and the the whole song first started as a as a five minute song written by uh, Linus, our bassist. Mm -hmm. And uh, then our former guitarist, Tom Gelschläger, came into the ranks and he thought, okay, he could split the song into mm -hmm. two pieces. Um, that's actually something we did on Cosmogenesis, on the very last song, Centric Flow. Right. If, if, if you're familiar with that. It's like one song and in the end you have a very, very, very long outro. Mm -hmm. And we thought we're doing something like that again, um, since Centric Flow was a very, very good uh, song to end the live set. So we thought doing that, uh, this again. And... This, this whole idea was growing within a couple of months we've been working on. And in the end, we had like a 10-minute song with mm -hmm. a very long, with a very long um, acoustic part in the middle. And something was missing in the acoustic part. So I brought up the idea, why not working with strings again? Because right. that's, again, uh, a link to our very early days. On the, uh, on the first demo and the debut album, we already had strings. And I, I like those those li uh, links in between album. Although those records are not part of this this whole cycle, it's it was a cool idea. And so we hired um, uh, a a ranger from Berlin called uh, Matthias. Matthias. Eisinger. Matthias. Yeah, Alexander. exactly. You're perfectly prepared. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and exactly. So we we hired him and uh, through. Linus's father, which is a, a music professor and worked for the Wagner Festspiele mm -hmm. he also in Germany. With Florian. As well, as well. Yes. I've been at the show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know everything. That's insane. <laughs> and via this connection, we got hold of a couple of musicians from the Berlin Symphonics 
And so we recorded all of those strings straight in the studio. So there's no no plugin or anything. It's not keyboards or some samples or anything. So this is these are real um, strings. This is a real string ensemble, and I'm pretty happy how this whole thing turned out. And what I have to say, since all albums are linked in between, this is a spoiler for the next album. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds cool. In fact, you know, you know about the departure of Tom. You know, how would it affect the band in the future with all the things which have happened from past one year? Um, I would say not at all. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing is. Tom Gelschläger joined the band in the end of 2014, and we split with him in mid of 2015. Okay, so that was roughly around six to seven months. mm, I guess seven or eight months. I I don't, it it was not even a year. And within that year, we haven't had uh, a rehearsal. We haven't had any shows, didn't play anything. And we are not living very close to each other. So... Sometimes you simply realize how a person is working or how the personality is when you're working with him. And right. if you're only discussing within a computer uh, or two computers, uh, it's not the same. And I figured out, or at least we all figured out in the studio, it's simply not working at all, not on a personal nor on a professional level. Mm-hmm. So we made a, a proper a proper cut. Cool. And we have a, fin- uh, a very talented new guitarist now, Rafael Trujillo. Right. And um, so far, everything is working cool, and the vibes are way better than within the last year. That's so awesome, man. That's that, all good. That's cool. You have a tour coming up with DDA as well in probably in a, in a month or two. So uh, all preparations done. Are you guys even you know heading to US down the road this year? Ah, that's a long story. Um, we still do not have our working permissions. Okay. We applied for the working permissions in March last year. Yeah. And there are, it's it's insane. Uh, I'm not sure how it is for uh, for Indian people, but for us over here in uh, in Germany, it's a pain in the ass. We paid thousands of dollars for visas we didn't get. We had to cancel a tour, the summer yeah, slaughter, slaughter tour. Right. Mm-hmm. And we we lost uh, fifteen thousand euros aside from not earning a single cent within that time. Sure. That was really bad. And since we still do not have our visas, I'm not sure if we can make it in 2016 to the United States at all. So, but Probably aside one, from that, once that gets sorted out, then you can, you know, maybe have a tour there. Yeah, we would love to. We get a lot of offers, but everybody, uh, every time we have to say, well, so we it's unfortunately not working at the moment. So what we are doing is uh, simply doing other tours. I mean, right. We're working on South America. We are going to Australia, Japan again, uh, Asia overall. We uh, will just uh, confirm a, a big festival show in Asia cool, next man. week. And uh, well, we also get here and then some offers from India, and this is something I really want to go to. I would definitely be <laughs> catching you at the DTA tour, that's for sure. <laughs> but maybe Russian has to wait for some more time. Yeah. yeah, I have to wait for a very long time. I, but I do hope to come down to Germany and see. Obscura right in front of my eyes sometime. Well, we're doing a, a, a four or five week long European tour in uh, October and November. Mm-hmm. So perhaps. Perhaps. Well. <laughs> so you <laughs> just come over. <laughs> awesome, man. That's wonderful. Steven, thanks a lot for, for spending some time. We had a great chat with you. Um, all the best for the release, all the best for the upcoming tour, and uh, have a great, great time. You know, your Indian fans will obviously wait for Obscura to come here and. Thanks, man. Um, you know, it was great having a chat with you. Thank you very much for the interview and the killer preparation. Seriously, this is something <laughs> Thanks. special. Thank you, Stefan. And Thank you. That's a lot. Thank you.